Hi guys, welcome to this video. It's your boy Kunle Holokan. So we're starting with COVID today. As the US, India and Brazil continue to top the most infected countries globally, just last Friday, the UK recorded the highest number of death cases of COVID since the record began in April 2020. Say that 24 hours there have been 1,325 deaths. Um, that's deaths of people who've been have died within 28 days of a positive COVID-19 deaths. Uh, that's uh, surpassed the highest number, which was on the 21st of April, which was 1,224. So the UK has now has that any international passenger entering into UK will now require a negative COVID report before they can be allowed into the UK. This will be starting on Monday, the 11th of January. It's been a long year for the travel sector. And in a third lockdown, border controls are tightening. All international arrivals, including UK nationals, will now need a negative test 72 hours before entering England. There'll be exemptions for hauliers, cabin crew and children under 11. But passengers that break the rules will have to pay a £500 fine. <laughs> Good. So, just to be clear, um, that's one of those, um, you know, mockeries that uh, people are shooting in different videos these days uh, to mock Bill Gates' uh, vaccine that is allegedly to be rolled out into the world. And I'm not sure about this one. So, Gary, we, we've been asked a number of questions by our viewers that um, what is our opinion about the vaccines that's been rolled out across the globe? So, the truth is, every country, they are now on the race to get a vaccine rolled out and not just rolled out but rolled out for their own citizens so we need to get it clear that all of these countries are rolling out the vaccines for their countries like uk oxford here they are rolling out astrazeneca vaccine in america it's a different one there's one for russia so we cannot advise you if you should take this vaccine or not but what we know is a number of people have taken it and they are fine nigeria can also come up with their vaccine as well what Whatever thing you think works best for you, but we are not in the best position to advise. But what we will say to you is you need to listen to all health guidance across your country. Also, it is important that we continue to maintain social distance in our countries. The COVID is still real. It is still out there and it is killing a lot of people every day. Hopefully, as these vaccines are rolled out, the infection rate will continue to reduce globally and the death rate will subside and if not eradicate completely in no distance time we understand everyone is fed up of the lockdown but someone like myself i enjoy playing football every saturday thought that okay as the vaccines has just been rolled out i would be able to in no distance time return to the pitch and start playing football again as things stands it looks like um we still have a long way to go in ensuring that we reduce uh, the infection rate across uh, these countries uh, we will have to continue to endure and we'll make sure we listen to all health guidance across our countries we wish you all the very best at this uh difficult and challenging time. So moving on to Nigeria. So in Nigeria as well, still on COVID, the, the infection rate is on the high. Um, according to videos reports, many people are now you know, contracting COVID in Nigeria more than in the past. So, so clearly, we still need to make sure that um, across the world, uh, we listen to all health guidance across our countries and we maintain the social distancing on this level and we do not flout any of these rules so that we continue to get the infection rate down and the number of deaths continue to decrease in our countries. So still in Nigeria, just a week ago, we reported about a gentleman that died um, in the person of uh, Tunde Thomas, who haven't discovered that uh, his two sons does not belong to him, but belongs uh, to the uh, boss of his wife, uh, the, the person of Adam Noru. Um, if you have not seen that video, make sure you watch our last video. So we have some updates for you this week. So there has been so many further information that we we received that um, 
the lady has actually told this gentleman since 2017 that um, those two kids are, does not belong to him and that um, he, she traveled to America, she's been living in the state, she's you know, applied for asylum, that her life is no longer safe in Nigeria uh, due to the marriage under threat and that um, we understand that even this gentleman before he died, Tunde Thomas has moved on as well and he was on the verge of getting married on the 29th of December 2020 before he died on the 16th of December. But the developing story here now is the wife, Moyo Thomas, has now come out as she finally broke her silence. Uh, a, a message was released uh, via a very, very close friend of her, a childhood friend. Um, some of those messages we, you can see on the screen now. So what she's saying in essence is uh, all of these allegations are not true and that um, at no point has she told the gentleman that died, Tunde Thomas, that uh, those kids are not his and that those kids continue to bear his name and that um, the public need to continue to respect the families as they are you know, mourning the death of their dad or their husband. So what we We've got to say is um, it's unfortunate we cannot get a version of the dead now. Uh, it's important that we all learn lessons from this, that we make sure that we do the right thing in our marriages. Any marriage that will put your life at risk, make sure you quickly speak out, you seek counseling and you don't get into that marriage and you lose your life in the process. Also, in terms of Adam Noru himself, so Adam Noru has now been placed on compulsory leave pending investigation of this case. Uh, we understand that FCMB are currently investigating him and that this is against their ethics in the organization. FCMB wife insurance. My people, my people, who are not seeing the news service, we don't stand inside Nigeria. FCMB wife insurance. This is insurance policy to help plenty people wives when not their job in the office of the MD with correct pay. As late, they come as tired. When you touch her, she go say, leave me alone. My brother, don't disturb her. She has worked hard during the daytime with the MD, but we ensure her go and do DNA test for all the children. Application form for this wife insurance is there all over the nation. Just walk into any FCMB branch, collect the form, give your wife, make she feel her, put her full picture. She must wear something sexy. Oh. If she dressed like SU, her application will be rejected. There has been so many videos that's been trending that uh, majority of people are now withdrawing their assets from the bank uh, FCMB. Clearly, this is not a good image on their part. If uh, the managing director is, you know, who is leading the organization can you know be alleged with this then uh, it's a massive stain on the image of the organization we hope that uh, all of this will be resolved in no distance time and there will be clarity but it is sad that um, someone has lost his life here and we pray that uh, his soul rest in peace moving on to Uganda so on Thursday the 14th of January 2021 Ugandans have raising themselves for an election that they believe is a defining moment in the history of the country it's a bit of background for the people that does not know. Um, Museveni is the current president of Uganda. He has been in power since 1986. Yes, I mean 1986. And he is running for the fifth time in office. This is staggering. This is extraordinary. This is so unbelievable. More than 34 years in power since 1986 in power and yet he's still running for office. So there are two key candidates that are running for the office now. There is a gentleman called Bobby Wine who has now been widely accepted by the youth and the public populace in the country. A lot of people have endorsed Bobby Wine to be their next president. Oh my God, push-ups. What is the push-up about? What are these push-ups for? You've been in power since 1986 and you've probably not been able to implement all your plans and now you are just getting ready to fire up for the fifth time in the office. This is extraordinary. For me, even if you're the best candidate in the whole country, I'm do not believe and accept that you will be the best ruling candidate or you will be the most intelligent or that other people does not have idea. You need to give 
chance to upcoming ones. You need to grow leaders so that they can continue on your path. So if the fact that you are staying in power and you are not able to groom anyone else to take over from you, to survive you when you are gone, I can say that um, clearly that is failure on the part of that uh, current president. So we hope that the election will be free and fair this Thursday and that the right candidate will be given the chance to rule if finally elected as the new president of the country. We wish the Ugandan people the very best at this period of time. So moving on to Ethiopia, you remember the story we told you just last November, uh, the massacre that happened in, in Ethiopia just in November 2020, where about 200 civilians were massacred by the Tigrayan people. So we have a new development for you um, on that. So we understand that the Ethiopian government has now said that um, they have managed to capture the TPLF leader, that is the Tigrayan uh, leader who has been masterminding this attack. Watch some of those in this video. Top officials of the Tigray People's Liberation Front, TPLF, have been killed in an operation by Ethiopian troops. An announcement late Thursday by Ethiopia's Defense Force Deployment Department said nine other TPLF leaders were arrested. So clearly, this is a massive breakthrough for the Ethiopian government. We hope that this conflict will be permanently resolved and there will be no further killing in this region. And we wish the Ethiopians the very best at this period of time as well. So moving on to our money transfer update. So as we reported previously, um, the Central Bank of Nigeria still keep continuing to ask all of the money transfer companies to send money to Nigeria using dollars. So all the money transfer companies are currently using dollars now. So you may want to check with your money transfer company what is the rate for dollar that is sending, you know, in terms of sending any kind of money from different part of the world to Nigeria. So this is now currently being done in dollars. So we will continue to monitor the situation and we will bring you updates once we have a clearer view of what this means to all the money transfer companies. Moving on to our inspirational quote for this week. So we want to encourage you to be positive. If you fail, never give up because fail means first attempt in learning. Also, end is not the end. In fact, end means effort never dies. So also, if you get a no for an answer, remember, no means next opportunity. So be positive. Don't give up. We must have all heard that we have a new world billionaire, the richest man on the planet now. In Elon Musk, is now the richest person in the world. You may want to have a quick look at his history. How Elon Musk became the world's richest man overnight. On the 7th of January, 2021, Elon Musk became the richest person in the world with a net worth of more than $185 billion. The ambitious and futuristic billionaire has always been known to be ready to go. Still, no one saw this coming, especially in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic and the imminent surge of Jeff Bezos' net worth thanks to the increased activity in his company Amazon. An increase in Tesla's share price pushed Musk past Jeff Bezos, who had been the richest person since 2017 and is currently worth about $184 billion, a billion shy of Musk's new territory. Musk's wealth surge over the past year marks the fastest rise to the top of the rich list in history and is a dramatic financial turnaround for the famed entrepreneur who just 18 months ago was in the headlines for Tesla's rapid cash burn and his personal leverage against the company's stock. The Tesla and the SpaceX founder entered 2020 as the world's 35th richest person, only to make a grand entry into 2021, a time when many companies and individuals are counting their losses. Mr. Musk reacted to the news in signature style, replying to a Twitter user sharing the news with the remark, How strange! An older tweet pinned to the top of his feed offered further insight into his thoughts on personal wealth. About half my money is intended to help problems on Earth, and a half to help establish a self-sustaining city on Mars to ensure the continuation of life of all species in case Earth gets hit by a meteor like the dinosaurs or World War III happens and we destroy ourselves. The tycoon's fortune have been buoyed by politics in the U.S., where the Democrats will have control of the U.S. Senate in the forthcoming session. 
Daniel Ives, an analyst with Wedbush Securities, wrote, A blue Senate is bullish for the electric vehicle sector. With a more green-driven agenda now certainly in the cards for the next few years, expected electric vehicle tax credits would benefit Tesla, which continues to have an iron grip on the market today. That means things will even get better for the soon-to-be 50-year-old tech guru. While tales of Elon Musk's rapid acquisition and occasional losses of wealth are now a commonplace among finance circles as they are legendary, there remains absolutely zero doubt that the trailblazing tech magnate, who has helped revolutionize multiple industries throughout his 49 years on this planet, has turned himself into an incredibly rich man in the process. And while most of his major businesses have had the expected growing pains, Tesla, SpaceX, and, to a lesser extent, the Boring Company now all have bright futures, according to financial analysts. As such, there's little left to curtail Musk's already rapid rise through global rich lists around the world. And while the Silicon Valley giant has always enjoyed a place hovering among the true elite of the world's richest men and women, the Tesla founder now sits pretty at the top as his wealth surpasses a staggering $185 billion. It was a milestone mark Musk reached overnight, having overtaken Bill Gates just at the end of 2020 to become the second richest person but now he's even overtaken Jeff Bezos. Such a feat is no less than extraordinary as Bezos has held the top spot since 2017 and showed no signs of letting it slip from his grasp. But as Musk's Tesla company surged in value in recent times, it hit a market valuation of $700 billion for the first time on the 6th of January 2021, making the company worth more than heavy hitters like Toyota, Volkswagen, Hyundai, GM, and Ford combined. But if news of Musk's sudden fortune has caught you off guard, you're not alone. Musk entered 2020 as the world's 35 richest man. The bulk of his wealth made up of Tesla shares that, at the time at least, weren't quite as healthy as they are today. However, continuing demand for Tesla cars, along with the brand's marked improvements in getting cars produced at a rapid clip, have done to Musk's personal wealth what putting your foot down in a Model S will do for your serotonin levels. By August 2020, he had been named the world's fourth richest person, and overnight, another surge in Tesla's share price added $7.2 billion to Musk's net worth, leaving him aiming for the sky, if not the stars. Tesla's stock itself now sits at $521 per share up from $67 just a year ago, with many analysts predicting that shares in the auto manufacturer could jump past the $1,000 mark once its various planned gigafactories become operational. Musk owns roughly 20% of Tesla. The South African-American passed Warren Buffett in July 2020 to become the seventh richest person. In November of the same year, Musk raced past Bill Gates to become the second richest person. He has gained more wealth over the past 12 months than Bill Gates' entire net worth of $132 billion. Musk eclipsing Bezos' own extravagant personal wealth marks the latest development in a years-long rivalry between the two tech magnates, one that often centers on the accomplishments of their respective businesses. Bezos was reportedly so envious of Musk's success in securing a $1.3 billion incentive package for Tesla's Gigafactory in Nevada that it served for the genius for Amazon's beauty pageant-style search for his second headquarters. Bezos had a spaceflight company in Blue Origin, much like Musk does with SpaceX. The two men have traded barbs about their rockets and even fought over hallowed NASA real estate. Eventually, SpaceX won that fight and is the only of the two companies to reach orbit successfully. Musk's stock stash continues to grow especially after signing a major 10-year compensation package with the company in 2018 that further tied his earnings to Tesla stock price and revenue goals. He is awarded a raft of company stock options every time a new milestone is hit. The first tranche, which he received earlier in this year, was worth some $800 million. Like most billionaires, Musk had only seen his overall wealth increase during the coronavirus pandemic. But unlike that peer group, he claimed in court to be cash poor and financially illiquid. In 2020, he said that he would sell almost all physical possessions, including his mansions. He takes loans against the stock that makes him so wealthy and plows that money back into his companies. 
like when he dumped around $100 million into The Boring Company in 2018. Musk has a long history of using his own personal wealth to fund new endeavors, just like when he funded Tesla and SpaceX after becoming a millionaire running Zip2 and PayPal. Now sitting pretty at the top of the list, one can only imagine what Musk plans to do with his fortune now. Perhaps a colony on Mars isn't too far off after all. He may now be the richest man on Earth by the standards of money-focused outlets like Bloomberg and Forbes, though they tend to focus on calculating knowable assets. However, authoritarian leaders like Vladimir Putin and Mohammed bin Salman are both extremely personal wealthy in ways that are harder to calculate and also have unchallengeable access to the vast wealth of their nations. So there you have it, how Elon Musk became the world's richest man overnight. Elon Musk was born in Pretoria, in South Africa. His dad is a South African and his mom is a Canadian. He tried to get into America where he feels that there will be great opportunity for him to achieve a lot in life. But eventually, he moved to Canada and decided to apply for a Canadian passport based on his mom's uh, immigration status. And he was granted and eventually moved to America. So that's where he started his career. He studied and graduated and Elon Musk decided to further his career after graduating. He went to Stanford University to study his uh, PhD. After two days studying a PhD, he withdrew, he could not cope, he had to just leave, he abandoned the education and this, that was when he started, you know, setting up his companies. Um, he's been, you know, profiled to set up top, top companies, he's been into uh, Tesla, as we all know, um, oh, Silicon Valley, and also he's been working on artificial intelligence for a long, long time now. And um, this is a gentleman that um, he has been married three different times. And and he has divorced it three different times and eventually since 2016 he has now gotten a partner but he's not married anymore this gentleman was born in 1971 to be precise on the 28th of june he is just 49 years old this is extraordinary as of today according to Forbes magazine this gentleman is now worth 209 billion us dollars he has worked hard in his life if you read about this man he has set up so many companies and he has failed at so many times and today he is the richest in the world with 209 billion us dollars according to Forbes magazine how many times have you tried? How many efforts have you made towards life? What are the challenges you face? Continue to try. Never give up until your victory is won. We wish you the very best. Remember, if you have not subscribed to KNIT channel on YouTube, please kindly do so. Also, please don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you so much for watching this episode. And bye for now.